All right, what's going on, guys? It's Poxy, and today I'll be showing you how to cheese, or more so, exploit a boss to receive a whopping 650,000 runes and a bonus 50,000 runes along the way. There's a little prep work to do this, and this is totally credit to the Elden Ring community for finding this specific exploit, as this allows you to kill a boss that doesn't even fight back much like the Sleeping Dragon exploit, which I'll have a, another video on. And while I'm not usually a huge fan of exploits myself, sometimes you just want to level up a few times to progress further into the story. I will most definitely be fighting this boss legit on New Game Plus, but for now, let's get ourselves those 650,000 runes. So before we dive in, you will need to have beaten both Margit and Godric in order to begin the questline that we'll need to complete in order to unlock the new area that we'll be heading to for this boss. With that in mind, let's start the prep work. There are two items we'll be wanting to grab before doing this in order to maximize the amount of runes we'll receive, as this will boost our total rune count received by approximately 50% total, that being a Golden Pickled Foul Foot and the Gold Scarab Talisman. So let's start with the easiest grab, that being a Golden Pickled Foul Foot. These are found scattered all throughout the map, but one very easy to grab location is located just behind the building at the first step site of Grace, but we'll need to get on the beach below to get it. My recommendation is to travel to the first step site of Grace, get on Torrent, and begin heading directly west all the way until you reach the cliffside. If you go ahead and look down, you should see a section of the cliffside that is a bit lower, which you'll want to go ahead and drop down to. Once on this lower level of the cliffside, you'll now be able to drop down onto the cylindrical structure, allowing you to make it safely down to the coast. From here, go ahead and follow the beach to the left until just before the waterfall, where you'll see a little corpse. This corpse will have the golden pickled foul foot. So, one item down, one more to go. This next one will be significantly more difficult to grab, that being the Gold Scarab Talisman. So keep in mind you'll lose about 20% of the boosted runes if you're unable to snag it, but you can always come back to this video at a later time if you want to maximize the runes gained. But do keep in mind that this exploit will likely get patched very soon. You'll want to make your way over to this area on the map within Kaled, where you'll come across a deep crevice that splits two sections of the land apart. You'll want to be on the lower end and make your way to the southmost area, just ahead of what looks like a small canyon, where you'll see a tree root sticking out of the cliffside, connecting to the other side. Just jump down onto the roots and cross over to the ledge, where you'll find the entrance to the abandoned cave. You'll find the side of grace just within the entrance, so be sure to activate it before continuing on. Now that the easy part is over, you will need to make your way through the cave and defeat the bosses at the end, which is easier said than done. And yes, I meant to say bosses, two to be exact. To make it through this cave, you will need to trudge through Scarlet Rot, which builds up quite quickly. The Scarlet Rot will more than likely build up entirely during the first section, so your HP will continue getting chunked for the rest of the cave if you don't happen to have Preserving Bolluses, which will cure the status effect of Scarlet Rot. Now, thankfully, there is a summoning pool just after the first section of Scarlet Rot, so if you're having some trouble with the final boss, you can summon either a friend or a random player at this section of the cave in order to assist. As for the rest of the cave, it's best to run past all of the enemies, as a number of them will also try to poison you, making this venture double as fun. The path throughout this cave is quite simple, you just follow it straight until you come across a room with flowers and enemies up top to the right. You'll be wanting to take a right and jump up to where the enemies are, just go ahead and go through the tunnel, and this will bring you to the mist that you can pass through. Once you enter the boss arena, there will only be one to begin with, but after a few moments, the second boss, Clean Rot Knight Sickle, will spawn in. That said, once you have defeated both of the bosses, you will be instantly rewarded with the Gold Scarab Talisman. But there is no need to equip it right now, as we still have an entire quest to do. So, as a reminder, this quest will only unlock once you have defeated both Market and Godric. To begin the quest line, you will first want to head to the Rose Church in Lernia Lake. To get there, you'll want to travel to the island I've marked with a beacon on the map. So go ahead and fast travel to the closest side of grace you have activated and make your way over to the island. Out front of the Rose Church will be a familiar face, that being Vare. Speaking to him will trigger him asking you a question in which you'll want to ensure you select the top dialogue option. If you accidentally select the bottom one, this will result in the quest not being started, but you can just initiate dialogue again and choose the top option instead. After this first bit of dialogue is done, you'll need to initiate dialogue with Vare again in order for him to provide you with a gift, that being five festering bloody fingers. These items are used to invade other players, which you'll need to do in order to progress this quest. So be sure to log in if you're in offline mode. Now, to invade other players, you will need to travel to an area on the map that players your level will most likely be at, 
as this will improve the chance of a successful invasion. Keep in mind that certain locations, such as boss arenas, cannot be invaded and you'll be blocked from using the item. Once you've found an ideal location, open your menu and go to multiplayer. And within, select the Festering Blood Finger. This will then give you a prompt asking if you'd like to attempt to invade another world, in which you'll want to select OK. This will initiate a search for another player's world to invade, in which you can either try to fight them or just let them kill you, as dying will still progress the quest. You'll need to do this a total of three times, whether you win or lose the invasion, it does not matter, and then you'll be done with the invasion step of this questline, and you can now return to Vare at the Rose Church. Go ahead and initiate dialogue, and you will soon be prompted with another dialogue option, in which you'll want to, once again, choose the top option to be anointed. He will then give you a Lord of Blood's favor, which you will need to cover in Maiden's Blood. Since you're Maidenless, we'll want to find the Dead Maiden, which can be located at the Church of Inhibition, which is located on a cliffside in the northeast region of Liernia. You can reach this location by either following the map from the bottom or coming around the cliffside above. Whichever is easiest based on the locations you've discovered is the one you should go with. I'd personally argue that coming from the bottom will be ideal for most players, as that is the path I followed, and you can avoid all enemies from this direction. Now, when you're first arriving to the Church of Inhibition, you'll be invaded by an NPC. If you have the Blood Slash Ash of War, you can go ahead and just spam it to continue staggering the invader until death, which will make this encounter a lot easier. After the invader has been vanquished, which will reward you with a Feral Calling Finger Remedy, Fingerprint Grape, and Vike's War Spear, go ahead and continue up the hill and enter the church, where there will be a Sight of Grace you can activate. To the left of the Sight of Grace, there will be the Dead Maiden, which you'll want to go ahead and loot to receive the Finger Maiden outfit. Once the corpse has been looted and you've closed all the prompts, you will then want to activate the corpse again to dye the cloth with Maiden's blood. This will then give you a blood-stained version of the Lord of Blood's favor. Of course, before you leave, be sure to grab the Sacred Tear while you're here in order to improve your flasks. Now that we have the Maiden Bloodstained Lord of Blood's Favor, we can go ahead and return to Vare at the Rose Church. Just go ahead and initiate dialogue once again, and he will let you know that you've completed the final trial. After the dialogue, you will then want to offer your finger to Vare. This will play out a short animation and will give you a blood finger. After this dialogue is completed, you will then want to talk to him again, which will result in him giving you the Pure Blood Knight's Medal which will be used to teleport to the boss location. So now that you've received this item, go ahead and open your inventory and find it within your tools category. Upon use, you'll be asked if you would like to go to the audience grounds. Go ahead and select yes, and you will be teleported to Mogwin Palace. Once you've loaded in, head straight up the first staircase, where you'll find the map for this newly discovered location. Going up the next set of stairs, you will find a Site of Grace, which will allow you to fast travel to this location in the future, and will act as a respawn point if you happen to die on your way to the boss. Of course, another summoning pool is here, but we'll be avoiding all enemies in this section, so a friend is unnecessary. As from this summoning pool, you'll want to run up this third set of stairs, where you'll see the first group of enemies. You'll make your way up another set of stairs, where you'll begin to see why we're running past all of the enemies, as there is a lot of them. Just keep following the path straight, avoiding any that run at you to explode, and weaving through the rest. Be sure to continue straight and take the path that hooks right along a cliffside, which will lead to a large red mound of flesh, which you can just jump over on the left side to avoid. Continue following this path until you reach a temple entrance, which you'll want to enter. This section will be much easier with a torch, but isn't entirely necessary, and I didn't run into any enemies in this section, so you should be safe if you get lost. Just run straight through the first open area you enter, which will lead to a cave that you'll want to hook right in. You'll see a corpse ahead that you'll want to be sure to loot, as it has a Lord's Rune, which will give us a bonus 50,000 runes when consumed. From here, continue the path to the left of the corpse to begin going up a small set of stairs. Just follow the path and feel free to grab the Ghost Glove Wart, which will let non-torch users know that they're heading in the right direction. The path will continue up another staircase, which will finally lead to an exit out of the temple, where you can activate another Site of Grace. From this Site of Grace, just head south up the staircase, where you'll see a group of enemies guarding a chest. Go ahead and ignore this and head to the right, where you'll be able to take a lift to Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum. You'll want to run straight through the gateway to trigger the introductory cutscene for Moog Lord of Blood. Feel free to try and defeat him for the first encounter, but if you do so, it will net you 30% less runes, as you won't have consumed the Golden Pickled Foulfoot. If you want to get straight to the exploit, just go ahead and let him kill you. When choosing your revival location, be sure to select the Stake of Marika. This will spawn you outside the Mist Gateway. And rather than traversing through the mist like you would with any other boss, we will want to go ahead and strip ourselves naked of all of our gear, including armaments, armor, and talismans. This will allow us to be as light as possible to make the necessary jumps. 
Once naked, you'll want to jump onto this railing and onto the corner pedestal. From here, you'll want to jump over to the gravestones and then onto the small pillar-like structure. From here, look over to the ledge, and that is where you'll need to make it to. And this is where the jumping gets more difficult, as you'll need to do a little trick to activate sprinting when stationary. Otherwise, you won't sprint and will just end up not making it, doing a roll or backstepping. So, to activate sprint while stationary, what you'll want to do is jump, and while in the air, begin holding the sprint key. And don't let go, even when you land. As long as you continue holding the sprint key, sprinting will stay active. All you have to do from here while continuing to hold the sprint key is move forward and jump. As long as you continue holding the sprint key, your character should immediately start sprinting, which will allow for a further jump that will launch your character much further. For instance, this is what a jump looks like without the sprint trick, and here is a failed attempt, but using the sprint trick. You'll likely fail this a few times, so just be patient, as you can hold onto the sprint trick as long as you like when you're on the pillar. You'll eventually make it onto the ledge, like I did, and from here you can now re-equip all of your items. Be sure to also equip the Golden Scarab Talisman, which will give you approximately a 20% boost in the runes that you'll receive. I'd also suggest placing the Golden Pickled Foul Foot in your pouch for ease of use, just ensure you don't accidentally consume it. You're now good to drop into the boss arena, where you can pick up any runes you may have dropped when dying previously, and are free to now run up to the unresponsive boss, and attack away. The boss will not engage even if you break its poise and do a critical attack, so you don't need to worry about him at all. Just get him down to the point where you feel safe using the Golden Pickled Foul Foot, which will last a total of 3 minutes. Once you finish off the boss, you'll be rewarded with Moog's Great Rune, Remembrance of the Blood Lord, and a whopping 650,000 plus runes. This combined with the Lord's Rune we snagged earlier in the temple will result in over 700,000 runes that you can spend on levels or whatever your heart desires. Turning around, you'll now be able to activate a Site of Grace within the arena, which will be a nice way to pump all of your runes into leveling right away. Just to put it in perspective, this allowed me to go from level 53 to 78 in one sitting, allowing me to mainly pump up my intelligence. And this was before consuming the Lord's Rune, which would level me to 79. And that is how you get over 700,000 runes by exploiting a single boss in Elden Ring. I know this sort of video won't be for everyone, so let me know your thoughts on it down in the comment section below. But that's it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please smack that like button down below, subscribe, join the league fight if you haven't already, and ring that bell icon to stay in all of my future videos. It'd be super greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this is Epoxy, signing off.